took 16 months for the official indictment to emerge. It seems that the ruling power could not decide how to frame him for a long while. In the end, he was accused for allegedly planning, financing, and organizing the Geze Park protest, as if such a protest can be organized. A 657-page long indictment seeking an aggravated life imprisonment for 16 defendants, including Kavala, was accepted on March 4, 2019. The indictment was scandalous and did not make any attempt to establish a causal link between the alleged evidence cited and the heavy charges against him. The first hearing took place on June 24, 2019, 18 months after his arrest. Six hearings were held between June 2019 and February 2020. All the hearings were like battles where the lawyers had to teach the basic principles of law and justice to a panel of judges and a public prosecutor. Throughout the process, the judiciary itself has been violating the laws at different levels, ranging from listening to a witness without the lawyer's presence to not applying the verdict of the European Court of Human Rights. The European Court of Human Rights announced its verdict on December 10, 2019 on Human Rights Day and has given a ruling of rights violation and demanded the immediate release of Osman Kavala. To delay the process, the local court dismissed the decision by saying it should be finalized after the application of the Ministry of Justice and use this unlawful excuse in two hearings. In the final hearing on February 18, 2020, the court ordered the acquittal of Osman Kavala and other defendants. We were not expecting this verdict since all of the demands submitted by the lawyers were rejected by the panel of judges and the atmosphere was quite tense. We were shocked, but at the same time, extremely happy. Family, friends and colleagues of Osman, as well as a group of journalists, went off to wait for him at a recreational facility on the road to Silivri prison. Others waited in town for his return. After several hours, we learned that there was a new arrest warrant for Osman Bey regarding the same investigation. The vehicle, which was going to bring him to his loved ones, went directly to police headquarters, and the day after he was arrested again and sent back to Silivri. This was a total frustration. However, we were not surprised as President Erdogan targeted not only Osman Kavala and Gezi in the party group meeting, but also the judges who acquitted him. Still, the judges have been under investigation. At the very beginning of his predicament on November 1, 2017, Osman Kavala was arrested based on accusations of violating both Article 312, which is related with Gezi, which uh, means, I mean, abolishing the government of the Republic of Turkey, and Article 309, attempting to abolish the constitutional order. This was referring to the coup attempt. So he was accused from both articles. So the judicial process concerning the Article 312, uh, which one, which is related with Gezi, is as summarized above. For the case on 309, he was given a release order in October 2019. So based on recent changes in law of executions in Turkey, which limits the maximum pretrial detention period to two years, they could not extend his imprisonment from 309 and release him on March 20, 2020. Besides, the verdict of the European Court of Human Rights was covering both articles 309 and 312. So in order to circumvent the national law and the verdict of the European Court of Human Rights, he had to be arrested once again on the basis of a new accusation, and this time with the more absurd one of espionage from Article 328. Notably, Osman Kavala has never been questioned by a public prosecutor in connection to any of the allegations made against him. And Osman Kavala then had to wait for another seven and a half months for the new indictment covering both articles 309 and 328. None of the charges in this second indictment were based on any facts, evidence, or objective evaluation of any concrete criminal act. In this absurd indictment, Osman Kavala was accused to manage activities which trigger social disintegration 
by supposedly funding divisive projects directed at citizens, particularly those from Kurdish, Armenian, Greek, Christian, Jewish, Assyrian, or Yezidi background. To quote from the latest indictment, quote, with projects directed at our citizens of Armenian background, he constantly kept the events of 1915 on the public agenda, describing them as genocide, and by carrying out lobbying on this matter, he prepares the ground for our Armenian citizens to adopt a negative attitude towards the state of the Republic of Turkey. Through Anadolu culture, the suspect organized the In Memoriam concert in Istanbul in memory of the Armenian intellectuals who were sent to their death in 1915. And with many similar events, he lobbied against Turkey on the international stage by raising allegations concerning the so-called Armenian genocide, end of quote. The first hearing of this new case took place on December 18, 2020. And in his defense, Osman Kavala criticized the conspiracy theories surrounding his civil society engagement, saying, quote, the allegation that Anadolu culture's intentions are to bring enmity among the citizens and weaken their ties to the state constitutes a vicious slander. In order for citizens who are part of ethnic or religious minorities to have strong ties to the state, they should feel and think of themselves as equal members of the society, end of quote. So the Turkish state, I mean, by finding ways to keep him in prison, creating new articles and, I mean, crimes and uh, evidences and writing uh, absurd indictments, kept him there for more than three years and did not also this Turkish state listen to the verdict of the European Court of Human Rights. The verdict of the European Court of Human Rights was finalized on 12 May 2020, and the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe urged Turkey to ensure Osman Kavala's immediate release. So in three consecutive meetings of the Committee of Ministers, this was repeated. I mean, the committee was saying Turkey release him and apply the verdict of the European Court of Human Rights. So. I mean, he is still in prison and the next hearing will be on uh, February 5th. Uh, but luckily throughout this process, we were not left alone. Throughout the process, NGOs, human rights organizations, funders, artists, art workers, and many people from Turkey and Europe have shown enormous solidarity. They were always in contact and never gave up or hesitated in working with us, supporting us. Among them, Armenians and Armenian institutions have an important role. Osman Kavala has long been a target due to his solidarity with the politicians, journalists, and academics whom the government tries to silence, and his support for the NGOs working in the field of human and social rights, and the projects he carried out through Anadolu Kultur, which he founded with the aim of increasing the production and sharing of culture and artworks emphasizing cultural diversity and cultural rights, supporting local initiatives, and strengthening regional and international collaborations, and for spearheading the projects that establish dialogue with Armenia and create spaces for the Kurdish language and culture. So I will now talk about the cultural projects and spaces initiated by Anadolu Kültür in different parts of Turkey. Now I'll share screen to show you some images. So this is the judicial process. I mean, <clears throat> it is, I mean, it marks the major dates of the case, but the whole process is all very political. So it is maybe absurd to talk about the judiciary and what it's doing. Osman Kavala founded Anadolu Kultur in 2002, and the first local initiative was the Arbakır Art Center which was opened with the belief that a civil arts and culture initiative would serve dialogue and peace after the severe conflicts of the 1990s. Over time, the Diyarbakir Art Center became a place where artists from Istanbul and European cities visited and met local artists to design collaborative projects, a center that was open to everyone. 
It also became an important platform through which individuals willing to make art in Diyarbakir could get professional support and make connections. So Diyarbakir Art Center was in a shopping mall in Diyarbakir. So this was the space they used to have I mean, many exhibitions and events there. In time, they there was this Cinema Europa, which was part of the Arbaker Art Center, where they were showing films from Europe. This is the library of the Arbaker Art Center. And another project that at the moment actually still going on, the Arbaker Art Center is realizing, is Bach revealing the city through memory. It started as a cultural and artistic production program in 2012. And in the last years, I mean, more than 250 young people at the age of 18 to 28 from 12 different cities have taken part in this project. So the aim is to bring young people from eastern cities and western cities of Turkey together and to train them in the fields of video and photography. And so they were having workshops with experts from these fields and social scientists. And in the end, they were I mean, organizing uh, exhibitions to share their productions. So since 2017, the Arbaker Art Center is also working as the local coordinating organization of Space of Culture project initiated by Goethe Institute. The project supports those cultural institutions in cities, in three cities, the Arbaker, Antep and Izmir through project funding. So <clears throat> this is from Bach. And this is the Arbaker Comparative Literature Days. Actually, the Arbaker Art Center is uh, also, I mean, focusing more on literature, film, and uh, photography. And uh, this image is from the first literature day days in 2013. This year, we organized the third one. And this is in Surkiragos Church. Murat Amungan, one of the I mean, famous Turkish writers, is making a speech there. Another center that was founded by Anadolu Kültür is Kars Art Center. It was founded in 2005 and it became the sole multi-purpose hall in the city and served as a center for cultural communication and activities for individuals not only from Turkey but also from Armenia, Georgia and Azerbaijan until it closed its doors in 2009. So these are from <coughs> Kars. There were workshops, screenings, and discussions, and many events in Kars Art Center. Another center that was founded under Anadolu Kültür in 2008 is Depo in Topane neighborhood. Uh, this is an image from one of the exhibitions in Depo, Never Again exhibition, which was focusing on official apology cases of eight different countries. So Depo is a former tobacco warehouse Osman inherited from his grandparents, and which is I mean, since late 2008 functioning as a culture and art center. So Depo focuses on practices which deal with historical and contemporary social issues. Its program includes exhibitions, screenings, panel discussions, workshops, and presentations. And it publishes an online journal titled Red Thread. And with, it, uh, with its accessible and flexible structure, Depo aims to meet the need in Istanbul's culture and art scene for non-commercial independent spaces open to critical voices. So in Istanbul, it's either small commercial galleries or big institutions backed by big capital. So Depo is almost the only exhibition which is open to, uh, I mean, critical voices and I mean, which has, which is, more accessible than the big institutions. So in 2010, during preparations for the negotiation process for Turkey's accession to the European Union, Anadolu Kültür diversified its work uh, to include projects to create connections between European and Anatolian cities. Tandem Turkey is the main project within this scope. It's aimed at establishing long-term partnerships between cultural organizations from different uh, cities across Turkey and European Union countries. And so since its inception in 2011, Tandem Turkey has supported 50 international collaborations alongside knowledge development and networking opportunities for more than 100 cultural organizations from 55 cities in Turkey and EU. So this project evolved into Vaha, uh, which is going on at the moment as one of the projects of Anadolu Kültür. 
uh, Vaha is very much based on the experience of Tandem, but this time it is uh, also trying to cover the initiatives which were uh, mainly uh, founded by the academics who were expelled after signing the peace petition. So Anadolu Kültür has started to work in the field of inclusion of Syrian refugees. Uh, this image is from uh, a workshop in All Together Project. All Together Project aims to collectively envision inclusive societies and develop practical creative tools for social cohesion to be implemented in formal and non-formal learning environments in Turkey and Germany. So NGOs from Turkey and Germany come together to produce alternative education materials, which would be used by, I mean, which would be used by people working with refugee children. Another project that was also dealing with the uh, Syrian refugees were, sorry, I missed it, huh? books and games for children on Syrian cultural heritage project. It's aimed to develop and implement a new method that focuses on cultural heritage for the integration of refugee children to the education system in Turkey. So this project included a three bilingual books, two games and a short animation movie. And this animation movie won several awards. Uh, it's called Hadia. So there is a website which includes oh, this film and the books and the games. So uh, I can also show the link of the, uh, the project. Uh, another project that is uh, going on at the moment is the Arbacris Memory Archive and Portal. Uh, in this project, actually, this is a project which started as part of the Arba, yeah, within the Arbakir municipality, but when the state appointed trustee to the Arbakir municipality, the team there wanted to preserve the archive and try to find a way to continue working. So we collaborated with an association in the Arbakir and uh, found funds to keep on working on archive on the Arbakir. So it has two uh two steps one is this archive where the materials are digitalized and cataloged collected digitalized and cataloged and the other is the website where we are having separate exhibitions it's an online platform actually to i mean to reflect the uh, the rich cultural heritage of the city of course including the armenian community i mean there are sections on the armenian community of the arbakir uh, in one of the exhibitions for example uh there was a part on armenian music in diyarbakir where uh, this famous ah uh, what was the name of this famous ud from uh, united states he wrote the article and in, in the website anyway i'll remember another project that we are running at the moment is adalet atlas a podcast series on justice actually this was the dream of osman bey and he worked on this project in prison he continues working on, I mean, he has been reading a lot, thinking a lot on, I mean, the basic principles of law and justice and uh, its relation with other disciplines. So this uh, podcast series was created in communication with him. Our colleagues in Anadolu Kultur uh, were in communication with him while developing this uh, project. So this is a podcast series that is focused on the current violations of rights while not limiting justice to the law. The series, which consists 15 episodes, discusses the intersection points of justice and various areas from music to forensic medicine, from artificial intelligence to cinema. And in each episode, two or three guests from different disciplines share a conversation. So Anadolu Kultur has been realizing, I mean, I mean all those projects, what some of the Examples I showed are from the time before Osman was taken into custody, but some are the recent ones, but he is uh, involved. Uh, we have been working with him from the beginning on. Uh, there was always a lawyer who, because at one, yeah, in the beginning, we couldn't visit him. I mean, I couldn't visit him and it was only the lawyers who can visit him. So from the beginning on, there was a lawyer who was visiting him to follow the activities of Anadolu Kultur for the communication regarding the activities of Anadolu Kultur. So we continued working with him. Uh, so Anadolu Kultur has been realizing projects on Armenian re legacy and Turkish-Armenian reconciliation. 
uh, and following is a selection of projects and events which have been realized since early 2000s. The first collaboration project, Marhabarev, which brought Armenian and Turkish photographers to place in 2006. Uh, unfortunately, the assassination of Ranting, I mean, it was a turning point for many NGOs in Turkey, but also for Anadolu Kültür. So Anadolu Kültür started to focus more on projects with Armenians and about Armenians. And Ranting was a dear friend of Osman Kavala and his struggle for the reconciliation of Armenians, Turks and Kurds, and um, establishing a dialogue and relations among the Turkish citizens, the Armenian diaspora and citizens of Armenia was, I mean, this aim, Hrant Dink's main aim was also shared by Osman and so Anadolu Kültür. So we have done a lot of projects on Turkish-Armenian reconciliation where we brought together uh, these two communities. So one of them is, I mean, it's a recent example, the sound of the morning light, Gomidas and at 150 concert. Again, this was an idea of, of Osman when he was taken in, I mean, when he was arrested, he was in, this was one of the projects actually he suggested when he was arrested saying, ah, 2019 is coming. It is the 150th birth anniversary of Gomidas. We should organize something for this. So. <clears throat> Again, through notes, uh, we decided to have a concert uh, and with the support of uh, Maxim Gorky Theatre and yeah, in collaboration with Maxim Gorky Theatre and Kalan Music, we organized this concert. Unfortunately, Osman wasn't with us, uh, but in the end there was a I mean, there was a moment when we, I mean, showed his uh, photo and many people, I mean, sh shared that moment. It was a very touching moment. So this image is from Istanbul concert and there was a concert in Berlin and the, uh, this one is in Diyarbakir. So in 2010, in 2019, we organized these two concerts. And in 2010, when there was also this Gomidas at 140 events. Uh, this is an image from the concert, uh, but the, those events were not limited to this concert. There was also a CD, a performance, Travels with Gomidas. There was also a panel and a publication as part of this Gomidas at 140 events. And this famous In Memoriam concert, which was also cited in the indictment, this concert, it was really big. It was, I mean, there were more than, I guess, 2000 people in the concert and there were many uh, musicians from uh, various countries, but it was, I mean, in particular, organized to commemorate the Armenian intellectuals, poets and writers who were arrested, exiled and killed in 1950. So Anadolu Kültür implements collaborative projects involving artists, cultural workers, and non-governmental organizations from Armenia, which aim to strengthen good neighbor relations, mutual understanding and sharing. These collaborative projects were also following the steps of Hranti, who was striving to remove the borders between us and them with his frank struggle for peace and historical justice. He described the people from Turkey and Armenians from Armenia as part of two closed societies that are ever so close to each other and yet two distance neighbors. So this is one of those collaborative projects, Poetry of Stones, Ani, an architectural treasure on cultural crossroads. This exhibition took place first at Depo in Istanbul, then it traveled to Yerevan, Oslo, Ankara, and Kars. Uh, following the inclusion of Ani archeological site in the World Cultural Heritage List in 2016, Anadolu Kültür, Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage, and Eurasia Partnership Foundation from Armenia decided to work on an exhibition uh, to present the glorious cultural heritage of the city. Uh, so it was a collaborative work and uh, this exhibition was a, really a success in presenting Ani uh, to uh, people and as I said it traveled to other cities and by the way, Osman Bey was active in the inclusion process of Ani to World Cultural Heritage List. Uh, he, he took part in uh, those attempts uh, in, uh, by himself. So another, uh, this, this image is from Yerevan exhibition, Ani exhibition in Yerevan. <clears throat> 
So another project that uh, Anadolu Kültür is part of is support the Armenia-Turkey normalization process. It's a consortium uh, funded by EU. And in this consortium, there are four NGOs from Armenia and four NGOs from Turkey. And these uh, for one of the four NGOs from Turkey is Hranting Foundation. So Anadolu Kültür, Frank Hranting Foundation, Citizens Assembly and TEPAV are participating from Turkey. And there are many projects realized within this frame, within this program. For example, there's Turkish Armenia Turkey cinema platform where uh, young filmmakers from both countries are supported. There, there was, for example, Anadolu Kültür realized this project meeting of cities where Anadolu Kültür in partnership with a gallery in Gümrü, Gallery 25, and Gümrü municipality and Bursa Nilüfer municipality. So they organized concert, theater plays, exhibitions, and this image is from the theater play where uh, Bursa Nilüfer municipality theater is playing Eastern dentist musical of Agop Paronyan. This image is from, again, uh, one of the Armenia-Turkey normalization process projects, which is a female minstrels project where a female minstrel from Turkey and Armenia come together and uh, gave concerts. Uh, Ashik Leyli from Armenia and Deng Bejgazin from Turkey. So there were several exchange programs within this uh, pro uh, process, Turkey, Armenia. This is another project by Anadolu Kültür speaking to one another initiated in 2009. So within this project, young people from Armenia and Turkey come together and they were trained by academicians for making oral history research. So they were trained, they did oral history interviews and then this, I mean, resulted uh, in an exhibition and that exhibition traveled to, I mean, it was first open in Istanbul, but then in it went to Gümrü, to Diyarbakır, to Yerevan, to Istanbul, uh, to Berlin, to Paris and to Nicosia. So as part of this project, there was also a conference on uh, the role of oral history in uh, reconciliation processes. Uh, another project is Turkey Armenia Youth Symphony Orchestra, uh, where again, young musicians from both countries uh, came together uh, with the initiative of conductor Nvart Andreasian and the, with the support of Jam Mansur from Turkey. And they gave concerts in Istanbul and in Berlin. Uh, last year, we uh, started a project called Future of Future with curators from Armenia and Turkey. And the aim was to bring young artists from both countries together. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, we made an open call and received many applications, but uh, we could not continue due to the war in Karabakh. The atmosphere was not suitable to continue. And we had to... Uh, I mean, uh, finish the project. This, of course, saddened uh, us and Osman Bey alike. So all of these projects operated from the assumption that culture is one of the possible tracks for promoting dialogue between the societies of Armenia and Turkey. More specifically, artistic activity can facilitate effective exchanges since it does not need translation and mediation, and it transmits messages and creative bonds using the universal language of art. Apart from Anadolu Kültür's long-term and far-fetching projects, Depo has been organizing exhibitions about the silence history of Armenians in Anatolia since its opening in 2008. The projects are prepared by Armenian artists and researchers, both from the diaspora and Turkey. Through these projects, Depo aimed to integrate obscured parts of the past into public memory to help overcome the lack of awareness and misinformation around the topic and to open up space for dialogue. So I will show the images from the exhibitions very quickly. I'll just, I mean, uh, tell their names. But if you want to have more information about these events and exhibitions, we can, I mean, I, can, uh, I will show also the websites uh, of Anadolu Kültür uh, Depot and the Arbaker Art Center. So you can have a look at those in detail afterwards. So, for example, this is Lucy Lusso, Tigran Hamasian's Lucy Lusso tour through historical Armenia. So, this was a multi channel uh, installation regarding that tour of Tigran Hamasian. 
This is an image from photographer Arhan Arik's uh, exhibition, which looked at uh, traces of Armenian communities in Middle East uh, turned countries. This is an image from Diana Markosyan's exhibition. Diana Markosyan aimed to reconnect the living survivors of the genocide with their homelands. This is from Leftover Exhibition. Uh, the exhibition consisted of documentation of buildings left behind by Armenians. This is from Bizat Hallediniz. I mean, the phrase is in Turkish, but it's a phrase used by Talat Pasha. The exhibition was based on the telegrams sent to Ottoman provinces by Minister of Interior Talat Pasha. So the exhibition was telling the story of the reading the uh, history of the genocide through the telegrams of Talat Pasha. This is grandchildren exhibition. Uh, the, the artist, Argentinian uh, Armenian uh, artist Silvina Dermagerdician organized. She invited Armenian artists from diaspora and Armenia and Turkey. Uh, this is Maya Veyarman's exhibition where she looked at the role Armenians played in carpet production. This image, you can see Osman here. Uh, this is a wishing tree on display at Depo along with photographs of Scout Feng Qian. This wishing tree was actually an initiative of Project 2015 uh, for the public event in Taksim to commemorate the uh, centenary of the Armenian genocide. Uh, they commissioned an artwork to a Turkish uh, contemporary artist, Hale Tengar. So Hale Tengar prepared this tree and the participants um, uh, tied strips of fabric as homage to the victims of the genocide. So this was actually a, used in that uh, commemoration. It was, I mean, in the public space. Then we brought it to Depo and exhibited it together with Scout Feng Jian's photographs from the Armenians project. Uh, another exhibition is Anita Tutukian's Exploiteries exhibition. Uh, it feels like I selected the photos where Osman is in, but it's really coincidence. So uh, Anita Tutukian's grandmother, Hiripsime Sarkisian, survived not only the Armenian genocide, but also Dersim massacre. So Anita was reading the story of her grandmother through the embroideries she prepared. This is from Norair Shahinian's exhibition. Norair Shahinian is a Brazilian Armenian uh, photographer, and he traveled to his family's homeland, Marash Urfa Iskenderu. And actually, this is Anita's aunt, uh, and they are looking at the photo of a, 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 a church in Darsim. So she remembers those days and telling about it to Norair. So this is by Nylan Yurtmarch, without knowing where we are headed. She uh, did the, I mean, portraits of Armenian intellectuals and uh, to, I mean, rather than using the generic heading of arrested and cast out Armenians, she wanted to, to turn them into people with familiar names and faces. So the, the, on the wall, you can see the images of the Armenian uh, intellectuals deported on 24th of April. This is from Spectrography Exhibition. This is from Kirkor Sahakolu's exhibition. This is from Helen Sheehan's exhibition. Silvina Darmagur Dician's solo exhibition. And this is uh, Arma Marsubian's grandparents' story, bearing witness to the lost history of an Armenian family through the lens of the Dildilian brothers. Uh, the exhibition told the story of the Dildilian family whose members worked as photographers, primarily in the cities of Sivas, Marzifon, and Samsun. So we told this, I mean, this exhibition told the story of the Dilian family from Marzifon, and the exhibition traveled to Marzifon, to the hometown of the family, and it traveled also to Diyarbakir and Ankara. This image is from Istanbul exhibition, and this is from Diyarbakir exhibition, again, Sur Giragos Church. Another exhibition of Arhan Arık, Horobal, which is, I mean, this is a still from a video. Uh, he made an interview with a survivor, 105 years old survivor. This was a very touching video. I mean, I remember the moment when I was watching it together with Raquel Dink and crying. 
And this is from Antoine Agujian's French Armenian Photographers exhibition. This is from Helena Nahid's exhibition, Talking Openly. So you can see we had done a lot of exhibitions with Armenians on Armenians. And uh, the, the, you, as I said, you can have, uh, I mean, more information about this uh, in our website. So Osman Kavala has always been directly involved in all these projects and activities. So I would like to, and, and, and the PowerPoint with him. Uh, and and the share screen. So, yes. And I would like to also express my thank for Gulbankian Foundation in many of those projects, especially the 2015 program of Depo. Yeah, it was made possible with the generous support of Gulbankian Foundation. And as I said, uh, and Osman Bey has always been directly involved in all these projects and activities. In all of our collaborations and projects together, we have been the closest witnesses to the power of his commitment to universal values such as pluralism, democracy, peace, and human rights, as well as his devotion to fields of cultural dialogue, cultural heritage, and sharing of arts. He brings openness to new ideas, unbridled enthusiasm, and spirit of collaboration to all the projects he touches. In, so, in doing so, his influence can be widely felt. His touch extends beyond his immediate colleagues and co-workers to include a multitude of cultural institutions throughout Turkey and various corners of the world. His energy and commitment never ceases to amaze us. Osman Kavala brings people together forging a sense of solidarity and community amongst a wide variety of voices. Through his efforts, he has shown us that ideas and factions, which seemed mutually uncomprising and incompatible, could indeed come together through arts and culture. Uh, the 2020 International Hranting Award went to Osman Kavala, and in his letter from prison that was presented at the ceremony, he said, I will make a quotation from his letter, uh, beginning of code. I do believe that prejudices across different segments of the society, as well as people living in different countries, can be overcome through using our reason, engaging in dialogue, and listening to one another. In my humble opinion, one of the contributions of arts and literature to humanity is to help people acquire these skills. Together with my colleagues at Anadolu Kultur, we have undertaken a number of projects which I believe have served for this very purpose. Yet, regrettably, it is quite disappointing to see that some of the initiatives I worked on could not make the intended impact, or rather to see that the recent developments overrode their impact. It gives us a great pain to see young people who would easily become close friends under different circumstances and in an environment of equality and freedom, killing each other in the Southeast Iraq and Syria. It grieves me to see that our common cultural heritage, the Aegean and the Mediterranean, cannot be shared and that our border with Armenia still remains sealed. Still, I do not fall into despair. The main source of my optimism there is from young people, artists, intellectuals I got to know during my trips to many different provinces, including Diyarbakir, Batman, Van, Thessaloniki, Beirut, and Yerevan. They are the ones who believe in the shared wisdom and conscience of humanity. They are the ones who advocate peace and equality." End of quote. Despite all sorts of injustice and adversity directed against him, Osman Bey never gives up on his kindness and without prioritizing his own situation, keeps on drawing attention to the importance of judicial independence and rule of law. Although he is being held hostage for more than three years on baseless, unjust, and absurd accusations, he continues to fight for the ideas he believes in wholeheartedly. Even from his prison cell, he stays engaged and works together with us and keeps on doing good deeds. I truly wish that he will soon be free and this injustice will come to an end. I informed him about this event and he sent a note saying, we are so sorry about the war in Karabakh and we will be doing our best to continue the collaborations 
and to strengthen relations. He is sending his regards to all of you and wishes you a happy new year. Thank you. <laughs>